And I was born with biliary atresia, which uh, I don't know if you know much about, but hopefully you do. I mean, my bowel ducts weren't uh, formed properly, so, and they had to go in and do a procedure called the Kasai. And back in the 70s, it was brand new. Hardly anybody knew what was going on. And the doctor from, I think, China or Japan, Dr. Kasai, uh, my doctor, Dr. Lilly, went over and studied with him. Okay. So then he came back over and I was shoot, 14, 15 months when they performed the procedure. And I mean, everything went fairly well <laughs> from from there on. And in, I mean, just being so new and nobody knew anything about it. Majority of the kids that had the procedure either didn't or didn't have a very success, successful rate. I mean, living that way. So and I just, I mean, I kept growing and doing the things that a normal kid would do and, and just kept going in my life. And I mean, by the time I got older, I was, like I said in my, in my note, I was one of the oldest living survivors of the original surgery. Yeah. I, that, was, that was really kind of awesome for me. I was very excited about that to be one of the few that was still living we were going forward that. I eventually knew my liver wasn't going to survive. I mean, because everybody else, you know, all the past history, your liver's going to give out. It's, you're either going to, you know, conk out <laughs> or, I mean, it's going to be time for a new liver. So that's what really helped me for most of my lip transplant. Mm -hmm. Just knowing the, the buildup and the lead up eventually was going to happen. So I think that's what helped me kind of grasped what all was going on last uh yeah well last year and a half when my liver started failing i mean between the ages of when i was born and probably 18 19 i had one or two just flare-ups a really bad cholangitis mm -hmm. so they just had to let it uh, run its course and then from probably 20 some up to 38 39 <coughs> i had uh three more bouts where they had to go in and do uh, put the drainage tube into my bile ducts. In November of 2022, I was starting to not feel good again. So they went in and did one more drainage and I felt good for a couple of weeks. But then after that, I mean, I just got really tired and really a little more yellow pumpkinish color. <laughs> and what really made me, aware of what was going on. I was getting my hair. It's kind of a funny story. I was getting my hair cut and a lady was cutting my hair cut and said, you know, you look kind of yellow and jaundiced and your eyes are bad. And she, I guess you could see it in my scalp. Her saying that yeah. kind of made, made me think, okay, things aren't going well. So I went back to the doctor after they put that stent in and they said, something's not right. So I went in on the 13th of December uh, 2022, my levels were just so far out of whack. So, and then they put me on the, they looked at my male score. My male score was top of the chart. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not something to be proud of about your male score being at the top of the charts, but when that was it, they said, okay, it's, it's time. And the good thing was that I didn't have to wait very long. So like I, I saw, I've seen a lot of people have to wait four or five, six weeks, a month, things like that. They just happened to throw me in, put me on the list. And I guess with my score being so high, horrible, bad, they bumped me up to number one. I mean, I, it's tough to get, get all the way into it. But I mean, I went through two livers before I actually got the one that fit me. Cause I got the call at night saying, okay, we found a liver for you. Start prepping me. Got the next call in the morning, not the right one. Yeah. So, I mean, it was like high of high, mm -hmm. low of lows, let down. Yeah. That, that happened twice. Wow. So I was like, oh my Lord, is this thing ever going to happen? But I was just, I was just being so blessed that the Lord was taking care of me, watching over me. And then the, finally the third one came and everything was just, I mean, it matched up perfectly, and 
here I am so far today doing just being able to do some of the things I've been doing in my life. You know, I lived a normal life. I mean, I ran. I've I've done 17 ultra marathons. I've climbed and played in a normal life, and it was time to start over with a new liver. So at 49, I started over with a new liver, and now I'm 50 and ready to go again. So. Mm -hmm. I just always, even even before my transplant, I was just, I wanted to just be that person who would, I mean, want to reach out to somebody and just maybe give them hope and, you know, some positive feedbacks about life is, life doesn't end or it's not over with the, the small things. I mean, some, some of the stuff are, are very big, but I mean, even though you have biliary atresia, and I mean, you think things are just very, very bleak and you won't be able to do the things that you love. I wanted to just, you know, kind of inspire that, you know what, you can still do that. I lived with it for 49 years. I still ran ultra marathons. I ran hundred mile races. I, I got out and just, I never let it hinder me. Yeah. And so I wanted to, I mean, I hate being the guy who the spotlight shines on, but yeah. if it's going to shine on me, I I want it to shine on me for reasons like that, to brighten somebody's day, somebody look and say, like, holy crap, if he can do this, why can't I run a 5K? Why can't I just get off the couch? Why can't I do this? Being the way I am, I'm always positive. I'm always in a good mood. And I just love to push people to do things better and everything to just enjoy life a lot better because you never know what might happen. So. Why do I want to? Well, I mean, I want to I want to make a difference because, I mean, like I probably said before, I just want to inspire people. And a lot of people that probably don't know what small little donation, uh, an organ or a tissue or anything can do in somebody's life, whether it be like 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 a small tissue or a small organ, but anything like that that would, I mean, benefit somebody else to get into uh, more things that they love and not, I mean, give them the opportunity to keep, keep going on with their life. It's just, I mean, as big as inspiration. And, and I know it's a big challenge for some people to even accept giving organs to, you know, somebody either they don't know, or they just at the spur of the moment, don't uh, just kind of, at, at, it shocks everybody. And yeah. I know death and I mean it, you don't have to die to give up some organs or tissues but the yeah. aspect of that that it's just a shock but if somebody knows going in before mm -hmm. it, it it would happen just to be aware that they have the opportunity to yeah give somebody else an opportunity to live or do whatever. I mean, maybe it'd be months or years or something like that. that yeah. Hopefully inspire somebody to, you know, sign, mark the X on their, their driver's license and things like that and just donate. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Absolutely.